All right. Hey guys, um, a little bit different of a video for me. I am actually in San Francisco right now. If you can't tell, I'm in a hotel room. This is not my normal crafting room, uh, but I'm actually here for something crafting related. So I thought that it might be fun to make a vlog and bring you guys along. No promises that I will actually remember to vlog while I'm here because I was thinking about vlogging the trip and I'm already in San Francisco and I've been here for like six hours and I just now remembered to pull out the camera. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, I am in San Francisco right now. I am actually out here to visit Hero Arts. For those of you that don't know, I have a product line with Hero Arts. They're the ones who manufacture, distribute and all that fun stuff for the stamps and dies and stencils that I make, um, which by the way, there's a new release coming out October 23rd. Be on the lookout for that. Anyway, I'm out here A, because I've never actually met the Hero Arts team in person. Ever since we started working together, it's all been virtually, which has been great, but I'm really excited to actually meet the team in person and just continue to build those relationships. And also, I'm out here helping out with an event that Hero Arts is doing with a local crafting retailer called Creative Escape. It's going to be a lot of make and takes and classes, and they're even doing a tour of the Hero Arts facilities for the people that signed up. And I'm just kind of here to help out with make and takes and maybe help out with the classes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just here to be a helping hand. I actually got here a little bit early, so for those of you that don't know, Hero Arts is located in Richmond, California, I believe, which is right outside of San Francisco. I decided to come a little bit early and spend a day or two in the city, just because I don't know. I felt like if I'm coming out here, I haven't spent a lot of time in San Francisco. This is only my second time here. And I thought that if I was headed out here, I might as well spend an extra couple of days here. And I have a couple of friends here that I am hopefully meeting up with. And if I don't, you know what, that's okay too. I figured it can't hurt to have a little staycation and relaxation and a little me time. You know what I mean? So I flew out this morning, Adam and Hudson dropped me off at the airport, which was was very sweet of them. And I got into San Francisco around 11.30, 12 ish. Fortunately, my hotel was already ready, which is amazing. So I got to check in like four hours early. And so I dropped my bags and then I ran out about the city for a little bit. I went over to the Ferry Building, which is like a little market. If you've been to Chelsea Market in New York, it's very similar vibes, except I think a little bit smaller. There's a lot of vendors and shops and restaurants and things in there. And so I just kind of walked around over there and then I went to a coffee shop, got a coffee, some snacks. Um, and then I went to the store and got my essentials. Every time I go and stay in a hotel, especially in a big city like this, I always like to go pick up a couple big bottles of water because a lot of these hotels will charge you for water, which is annoying. So I like to have water in my room. And I also this time got a bottle of wine because I don't know. I figure there's a good chance I'll be spending a lot of time alone in the room. Not that I necessarily condone drinking alone, but <laughs> I thought that it would be nice to just have a glass of wine or two while I catch up on all of my reality TV shows while I'm having my little staycation. Okay, all that to say, do you want a room tour? I don't know. A room tour is lame. I'm going to show you a room tour. I actually kind of splurged on this hotel room a little bit because when I was looking for hotels, um, I had a difficult time finding one that I got really excited about. And because I'm viewing this as a staycation, I wanted to be excited about the hotel I'm spending time in. So I will say that I splurged a little bit for this room. I don't know that it was worth the price, but it is a great room. So let me go ahead and show it to you. Walk in to the right immediately. You have a closet, have my suitcase and fun stuff in there. And then it just opens up straight to the room. So I have a king size bed. And then I really love this couch. I've been sitting on this couch quite a bit already and I'm obsessed. And there's a coffee table, there's a little desk, which I have a meeting that I need to do here in like 30 minutes, so I will set up shop there. And then of course, TV, you know, there's really not that much else to it. I do have, like I said, my water and my wine, and that's also a cookie that I picked up from a bakery a couple blocks away. And then out here, I do have a cute little view of the city. You can kind of see the bay out there. And then over here, I have a view of this iconic San Francisco building. I forget what it's called. Uh, Trans America Tower or something like that. Someone <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And then over here, just a little bit more of the bay. You can see there's kind of like a triangular walk out here, which is kind of cool. I don't know. But yeah, that's the room. Oh, and then there is a bathroom, of course. I've already taken a shower, so I've already christened the bathroom, if you will, but... Oh, hi, there I am. 
nothing crazy, just a bathroom. Okay, so like I said, I am about to jump on a meeting here in a few minutes, but then I'm excited because I'm going to dinner with a friend of mine. Her name is Jilly. We used to work together back when I used to work in tech. She was a UX designer on my team and we've actually never met in person. She always worked out on the West Coast and then I worked in Austin. We both worked remotely. So we worked together a lot, but we never actually met in person because I left the company to pursue all this crafty goodness uh, before we ever got the chance to meet. So. She just moved to San Francisco. It's actually been a little while, over a year ago, I think. But <laughs> this is my first time being in San Francisco since she's been here. So we're gonna meet up for dinner and drinks. Maybe I'll film a little bit. I don't know, y'all. Like I said, vlogging is not my thing. But over the next few days, I'll see what I can capture. And I definitely wanna get some footage at the Hero Arts event and maybe show you guys around the Hero Arts facilities and just kind of show you what the event's like. All right, hey guys, it's a couple hours later. Just wrapped up that meeting I was telling you about and now I am about to go head to dinner with Jilly. Uh, let me give you guys a quick little fit check. Okay, so this is the fit, nothing too exciting. Um, hopefully I'll be warm enough. I think it's gonna get a little chilly tonight, but yeah, I'm about to head over there. I can't take the BART, which is the train here in San Francisco. Um, so I'm gonna try to take the bus, which I don't think I've ever taken a public bus, but we're up for an adventure, so wish me luck. Okay, hi, so a lot has happened since we last chatted. Um, I have not done a good job at vlogging this trip, but I'm still in San Francisco proper. I've not made it out to Berkeley yet for all of the Hero Arts festivities, so there's still time to turn the ship around. But it is the evening of day number two. It's about 6.30 p.m. or so, and I just picked up some dinner. I'm just gonna have dinner in the hotel room by myself tonight. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm eating and then I'll give you an update on everything that's been going on after I eat. Okay, so this is what we have. It's nothing too crazy exciting, but I am excited to eat it. So I have some steamed pork dumplings, which look pretty good. And then I of course have some chow mein or lo mein. I don't really know the difference, but these are like two of probably the most basic white people Chinese food you could order. But you know what? I'm gonna enjoy it. Okay, hello, I'm back. I just finished up dinner. The dumplings were really good. I will say they were not hot. In fact, I would maybe not even say they were warm, but they were still really good. So I can imagine if they were hot, they would have been amazing. Uh, the chow mein was exceptional. It was chef's kiss. So overall, a great dinner for a night in at a hotel. But I just wrapped that up and then I was on the phone with Adam. He's still in Austin, so he's two hours ahead of me. So he's getting ready for bed. And then I'm just going to chill for the next couple of hours. But today was good. I feel like it was really chill. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but another one of the reasons I chose to came down early is my therapist who... I've been with for several years now. Um, sadly for me, moved out of Austin last year and moved to San Francisco. Um, so his office is now located here in San Francisco. And so when I found out I was coming to San Francisco, um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to connect with him and do an in-person session because we've been working remotely ever since he moved to San Francisco. And that was really, really great. It was really nice to get to see him and be in person again, but also a little sad because I am someone who hates virtual therapy. And if I didn't have such a good established connection and relationship with my therapist before he moved, uh, I don't even know if I would put up with virtual therapy. Anyway, all that to say, I was looking forward to seeing him and it was great as I expected. But then 
now I'm sad. <laughs> because I'm not gonna see him in person again next time I see him. So anyway, that's a whole nother tangent, but I did have my therapy session today, all that to say. Um, I got to go see him, which was great. And then I kind of feel like, I don't know if any of you who are in therapy or have done therapy, sometimes you get like a little therapy hangover after a session where you're just kind of flooded with emotions and just kind of feeling a little exhausted and drained. And I think that was definitely me today after therapy. So I kind of just came back to the room. I was thinking about going out and exploring some more of the city, maybe going to the Castro or the Mission or maybe even up to like Golden State Park or something. But honestly, after I got done with my session, I just wanted to come back to the room and take a shower. So that's what I did. And then I kind of just laid around here like a bump on a log until it was time for me to get some food. And then I got some food. And now I'm going to lay around like a bump on a log a little bit longer. So in some ways, I do feel a little bit like I wasted my last like final day in San Francisco. But I also, the intention was always kind of to just take it easy and rest a little bit. And that's what I did. So you know what? I'm not mad at it. So tomorrow I'm going to move over to Berkeley and the event for Hero Arts doesn't actually start tomorrow. It starts on Friday. So the event, I don't think I've really explained this very well, but is actually a 50th anniversary celebration for Hero Arts. So Hero Arts just turned 50 years this year, which is crazy. And they've partnered up with a retailer here in the Bay Area called Creative Escape. Um, is it Escape or Escapes? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but Creative Escape is a scrapbooking and stamping, card making, crafting store. They carry a lot of Hero Arts products as well as other various crafting brands. Um, but they are teaming up with Hero Arts and doing kind of a 50th birthday soiree, if you will. So there's going to be one day on Friday is going to be a lot of make and takes and some tours of the Hero Arts facilities, which is really cool. So the participants get to come and see where everything is made because a lot of the Hero Arts products are made in-house, which is really cool. And then on Saturday, there are going to be, I believe, three classes being taught. I'm not teaching any of the classes. I might be around in the morning to help out, you know, help facilitate, but not teach. And then I actually have to get a flight back out on Saturday evening. But yeah, that's where we're at, y'all. So it's been a good two days of, you know, the first day came in and was a little more exciting and touristy and got to see an old friend. And then today has been really more just centered on taking care of myself, going to therapy, resting, relaxing, um, and very much looking forward to the rest of this trip where I get to do a lot of fun, crafty stuff. All right, so I think I'm going to call it a night here, and I will probably pick back up with all of you tomorrow when we head over to Berkeley. <laughs> Okay. Hi guys. Um, I can't remember where I left off with you guys. I think that I was eating dinner, my dumplings and chow mein last night, which was solid. Um, I spent the rest of the evening just kind of relaxing, watching TV and got some good sleep because I didn't sleep very well the night before. So that was nice. 
And then this morning I woke up and I wasn't sure if I just wanted to stick around the hotel before I needed to head over to Berkeley, but I decided to go ahead and venture out because I felt like I didn't get to see much of the city yesterday. And before venturing over to Berkeley, I really wanted to see some more of San Francisco. I got a little bit of footage of that, which you probably already saw. I'm still getting used to this whole vlogging thing. I didn't film nearly enough, uh, but I was just really busy enjoying the moment. I had a really good morning, which is good because yesterday, I think I told you I was feeling a little down and just kind of like a little emotional therapy hangover yesterday evening. Um, so it was probably a good thing I stayed in, but this morning I was in a completely new headspace and I'm so glad I got out of the hotel just to venture around the city a bit. Two of my friends, Austin and Millie, used to live in San Francisco and they told me about this really cute, really good coffee shop over in their old neighborhood. The coffee shop is called The Mill and it was very good. Also very expensive, but since it was so good, I'll give it a pass. I ended up getting a nitro cold brew and one of their specialty toasts for the fall. It was like a pumpkin cream cheese with roasted pears on top of a very thick sourdough piece of toast. And it was very good. Again, very expensive. I think it was like a $12 piece of toast, but <laughs> it was very good. And then after spending some time walking around, by the way, the weather is just phenomenal. It was like mid fifties to mid sixties all morning. So I brought a jacket, but honestly, I didn't even need it. I was doing so much walking around. I got a little warm. So I ended up carrying my jacket, but just this short sleeve shirt. Oh, it was just amazing coming from Texas because Texas is still warm. We haven't cooled off yet. So being here has just been such a nice escape. But anyway, after looking at the Painted Ladies a little bit, I walked over to the Castro, which was a little bit of a hike, but not bad at all. It was about 20, 25 minute walk, but again, beautiful weather. And if you're not familiar with the Castro, the Castro is basically the gayborhood of San Francisco. So there's a lot of gay bars, there's an LGBTQ museum, a lot of really cool coffee shops, some bookstores, gift shops, just kind of fun things to walk around and look at. I did go to a bookstore called Fabulosa Bookstore, and I did get a couple of books because there have been so many times on this trip that I wish I had a book to read, especially, I don't travel solo often, but I found myself, if I'm at lunch or breakfast or grabbing a coffee, it would be nice to be reading a book instead of just scrolling on my phone. Um, so I got a couple books in the spirit of that. And also I just loved being in the Castro and especially this bookstore because it is so gay friendly which living in Austin, Austin is pretty progressive in that regard, but you're still in Texas. Um, so it's nothing like San Francisco. And every time I get out of Texas and in a place like that, it just reminds me kind of how much I feel like I'm missing, not to get too sappy, uh, living in Texas, because there was just a feeling of acceptance and community and love in that area that was just really nice to be in. Um, and all of the books, in the, well, not all the books, but a large chunk of the books in this bookstore were centered around LGBTQ themes and topics and just stories that resonate and are real for me. And I think I could have just spent all day in there just looking at all of the book options, but I did buy a couple. The first one, um, cover your ears if you are sensitive. It's called The F***s and Their Friends Between Revolutions. Um, I don't really know what this is, but I read all of the little blurbs on the back. Um, they're like little reviews from various, I guess, authors and whatnot. Um, and I was very intrigued. It sounds like it's basically a story I, I don't I don't know what it is, honestly. I'm telling you, I was overcome with emotion and just excited to be there. But it sounds like it's kind of just like a telling of the gays and their girly best friends throughout the years and kind of that relationship. Um, so excited to read that. But I'm even more excited to read this book. Um, I had kind of a spiritual experience, I would maybe call it, in this bookstore. I picked this book up. I was kind of going around looking for books that were of interest to me and resonated with me because I've never, this sounds so lame, but this is, it's just the truth. I've never been in a bookstore where I felt connected to so many stories. Um, so just a really cool experience, but I was looking for one that really felt special and right for me. And I picked up this book, which was actually one of the ones that was like a staff pick and read the blurb. And I mean, it just kind of hit me. I, I almost started crying in the bookstore because I was like, this this is the book I came here to find. And that sounds dramatic. And I did have a great coffee and lovely weather. And maybe I was just feeling emotional and happy. And I'm not going to actually tell you what the book is, which I know is annoying, but uh, it is kind of personal and deals with some heavy topics. Some of the heavy topics relate to people in my life that are not me. But yeah, I just wanted to share that I stumbled into this bookstore and had a really great experience and picked up a couple of books that I'm excited to read. But with all that being said, it is about noon o'clock 
and I did get late checkout. The hotel is very kind to let me extend my checkout until 1 p.m. I don't check in technically to my next hotel until 4 p.m., um, but I am betting and hoping they can get me in early, but I'm about to go take a shower, pack up all of my stuff, and then head over to the next hotel. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I am back in my craft room here in Texas. I didn't do a great job at getting footage of the actual event, which I kind of alluded to at the beginning of this vlog. I was really just kind of focused and tuned into the event itself. And then also I don't love filming people without asking them. And so that gets a little weird too, but I thought that I would at least take a few minutes to kind of walk through the event and give you some of my reflections from those two days. So as you just saw, I got into Berkeley on Thursday afternoon. I actually went over to the UC Berkeley campus and walked around a little bit, but I very quickly left because I felt strange. I know that tourists probably walk the campus all the time, but for whatever reason, I have in my mind that I'm not that far out of college. But as soon as I stepped foot on that campus, I felt incredibly old and out of place. And I also didn't think about the fact that it was a Thursday afternoon at like 3 p.m. So it was flooded with college students, as you would expect. But anyway, after walking around for a little bit, I decided that I needed to leave. And then I just went back to the hotel room and kind of waited around and freshened up for dinner later that evening. For dinner, I met up with Aaron, who is the CEO of Hero Arts, Laura, who runs the company with him and heads all things design, Shannon, who is the education director at Hero Arts, and then also Rosie and Rachel, who are both on the Hero Arts creative design team. We went to a place called Kamal, which was only about a block or two from the hotel, and I like to think that Aaron chose this place for me because it was Mexican food, and as a Texan, I love my Mexican food. While the food was great, most importantly, it was just so fun to actually meet all these people that I had been working with virtually for so long now, and it didn't even feel weird, you know? Sometimes when you meet someone in person, it kind of takes you a minute to adjust, you know, the online person to the in-person person. But in this case, everyone just seemed just as they are online, which was really great. The next morning on Friday, it was time for the actual event to begin. Before heading over to Hero Arts at 9 a.m., I did wake up and go grab a coffee and a bagel close by to the hotel. I am someone who really enjoys a little bit of time to myself, some peace and quiet to center myself in the mornings, so I had to make room for that. And then Rosie was so kind, she stopped by the hotel on her way up to Hero Arts to pick me and Shannon up, and then it was about a 20-minute drive up to Richmond to Hero Arts headquarters. Once we got to Hero Arts headquarters, we met up with the rest of the gang, so Laura and Aaron were there. I also got to meet Gretchen and Debbie, who are two other Hero Arts employees that I work with regularly. Once again, just so nice to finally put real people faces to these names, and quite honestly, probably my favorite part of the trip. The Hero Arts headquarters itself was really cool to see. It's actually a lot larger than I expected it to be. It's a large warehouse area where they actually store all of the completed products, but they also have a manufacturing side where they actually manufacture and produce all of their red rubber stamps in person. And I wish that I could explain the process as well as Aaron did, but I'll throw a few clips up on the screen of just kind of showing how those rubber stamps come to be. So we were able to see how they make the molds to create the rubber stamps and then use the large vulcanizers, which are the machines that actually press the rubber out using those molds, all the way to adding the foam backers onto them, cutting the wood, and mounting them onto woodblock stamps. It was really cool to see this process in person and see all of the little parts that actually make up what all of us as end users see every day. Aside from the warehouse and the manufacturing and office piece, they also have this large open area specifically for hosting events like this, which is where we were set up for most of the morning. Keep in mind, at this time, all the participants who are actually attending the event are still back at the hotel, and so while they're at the hotel getting ready to come over to the Hero Arts facilities, we are just setting up and making sure that all the make-and-take tables are ready to go, which kind of leads me to what my job was for that morning. So I was stationed at one of the make-and-take tables, which if you're not familiar with what a make-and-take is, 
that's totally fair. This was actually my first time not only seeing a make and take table, but actually running one. And basically what it is, is at these crafting and card making events, a lot of times we will have what are called make and takes, which are essentially these tables you can go up to and very quickly make typically a very simple card. And there'll be someone at the table kind of walking you through the steps of how to make that card. And then you can kind of hop from table to table to table and make a bunch of different projects all in one afternoon or morning or whatever time the event is. So I was at one of the tables helping participants make cards using some products from my brand new fall release, which is coming out next week, October 23rd, mark your calendars. And that was the first time I've actually seen people in real life using my products in real time, which was a really cool experience, which honestly just made me even more excited to maybe potentially host my own in-person event here. If you're in the Austin area or within driving distance to Austin, let me know in the comments if that is something you'd be interested in. So for a couple hours, the participants were hopping around from table to table, making their card projects. And while this was going on, Aaron was also grabbing groups and taking them for tours around the factory and even giving them the opportunity to make their own stamp, which I thought was a really cool touch. Probably around 1 p.m. or so, all of the attendees loaded up and headed back over to the hotel, and then I stuck around with the Hero Arts folks to help clean up the area. Once everything was picked up, we ate lunch and just got to continue to socialize and chat, and then we kind of got to explore the facilities on our own. Aaron and I also filmed a little bit of content that you may or may not see on Instagram in the future. And then one of the most fun and dangerous parts is Aaron and Laura actually took us to a section where they keep all of the retired Hero Arts products, and they basically let me, Shannon, Rosie, and Rachel run wild and grab whatever we wanted, which is a very dangerous position to be in, especially when you're like me and you have no more room left in your suitcase at this point. After a couple of hours of exploring the facilities and getting all of the company lore, it was time to head back over to the hotel and get prepared for the festivities of the evening. That evening, Nina had arranged a bit of a birthday party for Hero Arts at the hotel. Like I mentioned, we were celebrating Hero Arts 50th year anniversary, and so we had all kinds of desserts and sweets and honestly just more crafting. It was nonstop crafting all weekend. But one of the really cool things about the birthday party was Robin and Ron, which are two of the designers and illustrators that, again, I've worked with virtually a lot at Hero arts showed up to the birthday party and it was really fun to get to meet them and hang out with them in person as well. We actually did a few make and takes together which was really funny because they're not really crafters themselves uh, so it was really funny to kind of see them get out of their element and make cards. Overall it was just a really fun evening of crafting and hanging out with a bunch of other like-minded crafters. Now the next morning on Saturday was a bit more low-key for me. I didn't have any official duties. Uh, there were a few classes going on at the hotel, so as opposed to doing the make and takes, which were happening the day before, which are very much simple, high-speed, high-quantity crafting, there were three full-length classes where instructors were actually teaching step-by-step -step more complicated cards. And the first class of the morning was taught by Shannon, who was using some products from my new product line, different than the ones used in the make and take the day before. So I kind of just played assistant and walked around the room helping where needed. But to be honest, Shannon is such a pro that there wasn't a ton of help needed. So I honestly just ended up a lot of times kind of looking on and trying to get a glimpse of whether people were enjoying the new products and found them easy and fun to use, which I think they did, which made my heart very happy. Once Shannon's class wrapped up, it was time for lunch, and that meant it was also time for me to pack up and leave, so I actually ran up to my hotel room, and then I unfortunately had to call my Uber, hop on a plane, and head back to Texas. Now, I realize this may all be a lot more information than you asked for, but I thought that it would just be fun to share my experience, even if I didn't get great footage, just so that I could kind of share my first in-person experience with all of you. There were so many great parts of this trip, but overall, I think the best part was definitely getting to meet so many wonderful people. I met so many people from Hero Arts who of course I've interacted with and chatted with on a near daily basis, but there's just something different when you're getting to meet people in person. And then it was also a ton of fun to actually meet some of the attendees of the events who were familiar with me and my content and my work and just get to be able to chat with you about what you like creating, how you got into card making. And one attendee, we even talked about tech and banking for a while because we both kind of worked in those industries. So it was just really fun to be able to connect with all of you on a more personal level. Also, I'm going to go ahead and plug, I've mentioned it a couple times, but my new product line with Hero Arts comes out next week, October 23rd. It builds off some of the themes that I introduced in my spring release while also introducing a couple of new themes, and I'm really excited for all of you to finally get your hands on it. I will have a release video next week kind of walking through all of the products, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you don't want to miss that. I'll also be sure to announce the release over on Instagram, TikTok, 
all the other places as well, and all of that information will be in the description. All right, this video is probably forever long, so I think it's time for me to log off, but if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye, y'all.